Hey everyone, my name is Jeffrey Wei. I am the editor for NetTouch Plus. Today I'm going to give you a crash course in WordPress plugin development. So if you've never created a plugin before, this is going to be the screencast for you. What we're going to be building is just kind of a simple plugin that makes life easier, really specifically for me. As you know, we've received dozens and dozens of tutorial submissions every month, and most of them, I'd say 90% of them, have small little errors. Some of them might be a little grammar issues that can be easily fixed like an apostrophe. Some of them are they use H2 tags when we prefer that they use H3. Other ones, you know, there's just lots of little things. They need to wrap their images with divs according to our specs. And so when they don't do that, I had to do it myself and it can be actually very time consuming. So I created a plugin that handles some of that for me so I don't have to worry about it too much. Now I'm going to teach you how to build a slimmed down version of this plugin. So, to get started, I have MAMP running. I'm going to go to my htdocs folder, and I have this WordPress folder. So, let me open up Firefox and browse to that folder. It's localhost slash WordPress, and I have the basic installation of WordPress running. Okay, so I'm going to go to wp-admin and log in. And we're going to come down to plugins. And you can see here, these are the two standard plugins that come with every WordPress installation. Okay, so we are going to build our little Tuts formatting plugin. So I'm going to open up WordPress, and plugins are stored in the wp-content plugins folder. And I already have this from a previous uh, when I was working through it, so I'm going to delete that, and we'll start from scratch. So let's create a new folder, and we'll call it Tuts formatting. What I'm going to do here is let's work in Espresso today. And let's get rid of this project. All right, and a new file. We'll save this file to that plugins folder, right? So we are websites, WordPress, WP content, plugins touch formatting, and we can either call it the same name as our folder or index. It doesn't really matter. We'll just stick with index for now and click save. Okay, let me see if I can clean this up because I'm on such a small screen. Okay, so we're not going to add any HTML because all a plugin is is a function or a group of functions that extends the capabilities of WordPress. So we hook on or we add a filter to some of WordPress's uh, functions, and then we can append any additional actions or methods. So what we want to do is in this slimmed down version of the plugin, I'd like for every submission, we want to automatically append the subscribe information. So let's just take a quick example to show you what I'm speaking of. If you already know, feel free to skip a minute ahead. With every NetTouch tutorial, we have headings that are H3 tags. That's important. We have these images. And notice how they are wrapped in this kind of gray background. And the way we accomplish that is we wrap all images with a div with a class of tutorial image. And then we have this extra styling where we have a border around the image and then a background for the div and then a border around the div. So we're going to add that as well because many people, when they submit tutorials, forget to do that for us. And then finally, if you come down to the very bottom, we always have this subscribe information at the bottom that I usually manually enter, or I use text expander to do it a bit quicker. But as I said, we can create a plugin that will do this for us. And if you have a job similar to mine, this can save you a great deal of time. So I'm going to close that out and hide it. And within here, similar to the style sheet where you have to comment it in order for WordPress to recognize your, your template, you need to do the same thing for plugins. So let's do plugin comments. I've added a shortcut to text expander just to save me time since I do this very often. Let's go ahead and amend some of this information. Plugin name we'll call text formatting. And plugin URI, we don't really have one. Ultimately, I will link to the posting on net.touch plus, so we'll do that for now. A description saves me time. That's fine. This is probably not a plugin you would ever release to the public. It's more something for, for your personal reasons. Version, when you update it, you can update the version to let your users know that it's the latest version. We'll start out with 1.0. 
author is Jeffrey Way, and author you are I. I'm currently working on this new site that I never have time to finish, so we'll just link to NetTuts. Okay, I'm going to save that, and now that's all we need to do in order for WordPress to recognize our plugin. So I'm going to hit con Command R to refresh, and you can see here we have it. We have our plugin name, our plugin version, and a plugin description, and the author along with the link to my URI. So it doesn't do anything yet, but let's go ahead and activate it. Okay, we've already acti activated our plugin. So I'm going to come back here and we are going to begin. And we're going to call this function tut formatting. Okay. So the first thing we want to do, as I said, is I want to append our subscribe information to the bottom of every posting. So let's go ahead and create a variable, and that variable will store that chunk of HTML. So let's create it, and we're going to call it end of touch, something easy to recognize. And we will use a here docs to make it easier. And you can do that by doing um, less than, less than, less than key, and then paste in regular HTML. And I believe I have it uh, end of tut nt. Yep. Okay, clean this up just a little bit. And when we want to designate the end of our key, we just type it again. So now this end of tut variable will will be equal to this block of HTML. And if you don't if you don't understand this and you've never experienced TierDocs, go to blog.themeforce.net and in the Diving into PHP video series, one of those days, I'm sorry, I can't remember it, but I cover that. And also, if you're new to WordPress, check out WordPress for Designers from blog.themeforce.net by Drew Douglas. He does a great job and they're all videos and it helps you get right into it. Okay, so I'm going to save this. And let's go to PHP HTML. There we go. So the next step is to find out. Remember, some authors, when they submit a tutorial, they do everything correctly, and they make sure that they wrap their images within divs, like I specified. So we need to make sure, we need to check to see if they've already done that, because if they have, we don't want to do any additional work. So we're going to use regular expressions to search through our content. Now, before we get into that, we need to discuss uh, filters. Filters are uh, ways that we can latch on to certain sections of WordPress when it's functioning and add new information. Now, there are many different filters. You can filter the title. You can filter areas in the admin section. You can filter the content. And the content refers literally to the blog posting. So the way we can add a filter in this case is add filter. After our, remember, after our closing uh, uh, curly brace, and I'm going to add a filter to the content. All right, and what filter are we going to add? We're going to add a new function called Tuts Formatting. Notice that that's the exact same name as our function right here. So we're saying before you display the content, the main, you know, the main body of the blog post, run this this touch formatting function first. Now we can pass in a variable within our function. I'm just going to type content. And now this content variable is going to, dis going to store all of the uh, that content from the blog posting. So this variable will be equal to, let's go to, um, let's go to the very top and go to visit site. I'll need to fix that plugin name information right there. Uh, the c content will be equal to this section right here. All right. So that's important. Now we can latch on and search through that content. So let's begin by creating a variable called match. And we're going to use a PHP function called preg underscore match underscore all. And that's going to search through our content and match as many occurrences. So let's just go ahead and do it. Preg match all. And this is going to accept three parameters. The first one is going to be the regular expression. The second one is going to be what we are searching through. And the third one is optional, and that will be a variable that stores the match uh, for, for each occurrence that it's found, if that makes sense. So let's just go ahead and begin. And then I'll explain it more in a bit. Okay. 
Pregmatch all. Once again, this first one is the the search string, the regular expression. The second one is what are we searching through? We're searching through the content or the body of the posting. And the third is whatever is found that will be an array, store that into this matches array. Okay, so let's begin. Pregmatch all. We could probably, I did this a little quickly before the screencast, so maybe as we work our way through it, we can actually make our regular expression more efficient. So just keep that in mind. So we are first searching for to see if the user has already wrapped their images within divs, as I specified before. And we wrap our images with divs with a class of tutorial image. So I'm going to search for that first. So we'll do div class equals tutorial image. Now, I bet you didn't realize you're going to get some training in regular expressions, actually a good bit of training if you're unfamiliar. Also, if you'd like to learn more, go to blog.themeforce.net, and there is a regular expression for dummies screencast series that you should check out, too. It's still going on. What we need to make sure with regular expressions is to compensate for what the user might do. You never assume what they will do. So in this case, I've assumed that the user is going to format uh, their div like so. But some people prefer to use a single quote. Even furthermore, some people leave it off completely, even though they're not supposed to. So we need to compensate for either of those occurrences. So we'll use a character class, and we'll do something like, um, we'll allow a single quote, or a double quote, or zero. So I'll do question mark. So we use this backslash to escape it, because otherwise PHP will think this single quote means I'm closing out our search string. So I'm going to escape that. And we're saying we will allow a single quote, a double quote. Question mark means zero or one of the, the preceding character. So if nothing is found, it will just assume that the user didn't do anything. So let's continue on. Then we have tutorial image. And then we're going to do the same thing again to close off tutorial image. And then uh, we will have... Um, that closes off our div, then we are searching for the image within. So there could be the image immediately after that opening div, or the user could have spaces. So for example, they could do div class equals tutorial image, and then image source, close out their div, or, and probably more realistically, they'll do it like something like this like that. So with regular expressions, we need to compensate for X number of spaces, correct? So let's come back and let's search through. Let me grab my bearings. After our question mark, we've closed off our div. So we need to say uh, zero or more spaces. So we represent a space by backslash S. And then we use the star sign, meaning there could be zero spaces or they could be any number of spaces. Okay. That way we compensate for all occurrences. Next, we are going to search for our image. So we'll do img source equals, and then once again, we're going to do the exact same thing again. And we'll say uh, any character. And we represent any character by a period. This will keep it simple. And we'll use plus by saying one or more of the preceding character. So it could be uh, really any character, any number of characters. Then dot, in, in order to specify that we're doing a dot, we have to escape it, correct? Because otherwise, if it sees this period, it's going to assume that it also is referring to any character. So I'm going to escape that. And then we will say, um, and just to make sure you understand what I'm referring to, this could be uh, my image dot jpg. So we're referring to a uh, number of occurrences, and then we're searching for .jpg. So at the very end, we'll do dot, and then uh, what's the best way to do this? Let's wrap, and then we'll say jpg or jpeg or png, something like that, and then close it off once again. And then we'll do uh, another space followed by one or more of any more characters or none, and I'll go over this more with you. Uh, it, it, even going through this, I'm getting confused just because regular expressions are tough. They really are. And then we will do the final uh, closing div. So we'll do something like uh, 
space and then close that out. And what we'll do is we'll wrap each one of these occurrences in there. Or, how can we do this? Or just close that out. Or, actually that might be fine. That should, that should be okay. And then space, zero or more of those, and then our closing div. And make sure we escape that. Okay, so I want to go over this with you again, just because it is definitely complicated. So let's just start from the beginning. Div class equals, and then we're saying that there can either be a single quote, a double quote, or nothing. Okay, that way we compensate for div class equals tutorial image, or wrapped in single, or wrapped in double. Okay, and then continuing on, and by the way, if you're familiar with regular expressions, feel free to skip ahead a couple minutes. Tutorial image, and then we close off our tutorial image, and then we have any number of spaces, and then we begin our image tag. So we're looking for image source. Now, we're making this, you know, you can make regular expressions as complicated as you want. We should probably keep in mind that the user very well could have done something like image alt equals something and then source, in which case this wouldn't validate. I wanted to keep this a little bit more basic, so I left that off, but just keep in mind you can make these as complicated and as efficient as you want, but I don't really think it's too necessary here. Anyways, continuing on, image source equals once again single, double, or zero, and then we are looking for any number of characters which will represent the name of their file. But then we want to look for period, and then it either needs to end in JPEG, JP, JPEG or PNG. That way we ensure that it is an image. And then we close off our image file or allow zero uh, quotes. Either one will be fine. And then we want to compensate just in case, like some people will omit the alt tags even though it doesn't validate and others, uh, other authors will add an alt. Something like that. So I'm basically saying here at the very end, um, look for one or more characters, okay? A space followed by one or more characters. So, and I know I'm being a little excessive, but I wanna make sure you understand this. So we're gonna say a space and then one or more characters, okay? To take care of the alt tag. Or there could be nothing if they don't add an alt tag. And then finally here, this section probably could be cleaned up just a little bit if I worked on it. In this section, all that is referring to is how we close out our image. So we could close out the image as something like this, even though that's not that's not correct. We could close it like that. We could close it like that. All right, so I'm saying uh, we, we're wrapping this whole thing in a character class right there. And we're saying it can either be a space and then our closing tag, so either that, that's all that's referring to, a space, and then here, but we have to escape that forward slash, like so, or it could just be that, okay, one or the other, and then we're saying another space, another zero or more spaces, and I guess that's referring to, hmm, yeah, that's referring to, once again, the div could be right up at the end of our image, or more Practically, there will probably be some number of spaces before the end div. So we once again specify that there could be zero or more occurrences of a space, and then we close out our div, and once again, we have to escape that forward slash. So we do it. Okay? The I represents uh, that it doesn't have to be this specific uh, capitalization. So if we want, they could do something like that, div class, and that will still match. And that's what the I mentioned. So, very complicated, but actually not, not too much once you decode it. It's just kind of hard to write it out. So we're searching through the content for this, and we store that in matches. So the next step is to find out if anything was matched. So we can say if, um, I don't, off the top of my head, I'm not sure exactly what match would store. It's very possible match would store uh, an index, like one, if it returned true, or zero, if it returned false, or it might return, I, to be honest, I just don't know, I'd have to check, I can't remember. So to play it safe, I'm just going to make sure if match equals zero, meaning if you did not find images wrapped within divs, we need to go ahead and do that for them. 
So while we're here, why don't we go ahead and indent all this? Okay. So if there was no match, we need to go ahead and do that for ourselves. So let's create a new variable called the content. And we're going to say preg replace. And we got to do one more regular expression. I'm sorry. And we're going to replace um, content. Okay. Preg replace, uh, the same thing. It, it searches for a regular expression. And whatever is matched, it replaces it with whatever we want. So in this case, we're going to search for images and wrap them with divs. So let's start by doing... Um, by the way, these wrapping slashes, those are delimiters, just to specify. It's, it comes from the Perl syntax. So we will begin by doing image source. And you should know some of this by now. So source equals, and then uh, one or more characters. Then finally followed by a dot, and then JPG, or JPEG, or PNG. Um, and then... And then um, and then we'll do a space, because there needs to be a space after our image. And then there could be any, any number of tags. So once again, we can specify that by doing um, period, any character, and then plus represents one or more of any of those characters. But we need to also specify that that could be optional. So hmm, why don't we wrap this like so? That way, a space and more characters or none. I think that'll work. And then we need to just close out our tag again. So why don't we just grab, hmm, let's find this section right here and grab it. And what we could probably do, even if we wanted, is uh, get rid of the parentheses on that uh, less than sign. I'm just going to keep it in there just because it kind of helps me to wrap my head around what we're doing. And I think it should still be okay. And make sure we close that out. And that should be good. So here we're just searching for an image tag, whatever it contains. And we're going to replace that we're going to wrap it within a div. So we'll do div class equals tutorial image. And then if we want to represent what was matched from that first parameter, it will be stored in, uh, we can match it by doing dollar sign zero. And that will match. And then we close out our div. I need to make sure I escape that. Actually, no, no, because we're not in, uh, we're not doing a regular expression anymore. So I think that's okay. And then we're searching through content. Okay, so it's been a little bit complicated, but I think we got it. We now have a new variable called the content, and that is going to search through whatever the user enters. So in this case, it would search through welcome to WordPress. It's going to check to see if there was a images wrapped within divs like they're supposed to be. If there weren't, then we need to go ahead and wrap them. So we create a new variable called the content, and that's going to search through the content, append those divs, and store the entire body is now going to be stored into the content. On the other hand, what if the user did do it correctly and they did wrap their images with uh, those divs? We need to do an else. And in this case, they've already done it, so let's set that exact same variable, the content, to content whatever was originally passed in, because we don't need to modify it. All right, so the next step, what else could we do for this fun little plugin? Why don't we replace any H2 tags with H3 tags, like I specified? Now, this isn't a big deal. Realistically, we could just go into our style sheet and, and edit it, but that's not what we've done. So we're going to go, and then rather than manually changing all H2 tags to H3, we're going to have our plugin do that. So the next step is to go, whoops, let's clean this up, get that same content. And now we're going to do another preg replace, and we're going to get rid of um, those H2 tags. So let's do H3 tag, H3 tags, and we're searching through content. 
And then let's do the same thing just to keep it easier to read. Let's do the exact same thing for the closing tags, right? So let's do a quick regular expression, and this one will be easy. All we're searching for is H2. Um, I think that's right. So look for this occurrence, H2. When you find it, replace each occurrence with H3. And then we're, we're looking for the closing H2 tag, something like that. So, and that's one thing we need to change that to a 2. Remember, we're just searching for that same thing, but we have to escape it. So that makes it look a little more complicated. And we replace that with the closing H3 tag. Just very simple little thing there. Hardly necessary, but it fleshes out our plugin some more. And now we need to return. We're in a function. We need to return this information. So we'll do, um, we'll use the ternary form and we're going to return. Now remember, I've appended this, uh, this end of the tutorial information. So we want to make sure that we don't add that to the, the front page because we're going to have little, uh, little dig buttons on the front page. And you don't want that. You only want that when you click on it and you go to the main page. What happened there? We'll have to fix that. So let's come on back and let's do return. And let's check to see if the user is on that, that main post page. And we, that is represented by is single. Is it a single posting? If it is, then we're going to return the content plus end of touch. So we're going to return whatever the body is with its revisions. And then if, after it, we're going to append this subscribe to our tutorial information, like so. On the other hand, what if they are on the main page or on a different page? In that case, we don't want to add that end of tutorial uh, HTML. So in that case, we'll just return the content. OK, so let's do end of tut formatting. And I wonder if I made a mistake here because my uh, my syntax highlighting isn't working too well. Maybe. If so, we'll come back and fix it. And then we add our filter. And that's one thing. I can get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. And that pretty much should be our plugin. So we add a filter to the content. All of the content will be sent through, filtered through this tut formatting. We add our end of the tutorial, we match. So we either check to see if we need to add a div or if we don't, we replace H2 tags and it's a pretty simple little plugin. So the next step is to see if I made any mistakes, which is very possible I did and, um, and get it working. So let's go to WP admin and I need to figure out where this is coming from. So let's see. Oh, and of course, I'm sure you guys saw this a long time ago. Or in PHP, maybe we should wrap everything within PHP tags. Okay, so let's come back. Sorry about that. And let's refresh the page. And that's still not loading, which tells me there's probably a problem with our plugin. And my guess is uh, when, when you're using here docs, it's actually a little bit tricky with white space. So we want to make sure let's just go ahead and take all of this right here and shift it to the left. OK, and that way, I think that should fix it. Yep, believe it or not, that fixed it. So we're going to make sure our plugin is activated. Type formatting, it is activated. So if it is working, it should be working behind the scenes. So let's create a new post called my new posting. And let's do this. Let's just swipe an image from NetTouch for the time being. Let's just grab this. Um, let's just grab this one right here. Copy image location. Don't do this on your own. And we will, um, I would never do this on my own, but it makes it easier. So let's go to HTML and we'll say, this is my first posting, and let's do a couple things. Look, let's add an H2 tag. This is an H2, but it should be an H3. And some more generic info. And what else? And now let's do our image. 
So let's not wrap it in a div. Image source equals that. Alt equals anniversary. Okay, so let's publish that. And you know, it's very possible we'll need to edit it. Regular expressions are tough, so you need to work through them. And we're gonna click on my new posting. And it does look, because we've seen nothing here, there has been a problem. So what I'm gonna do real quick, is I'm gonna pause it, find out where the problem was, and then I'll explain it to you. Okay, I only paused for a few seconds, it was pretty obvious. Our function name is touch formatting, and I accidentally added a filter of touch formatting, so nothing was being filtered. So let's see if that fixed it. I'm gonna hit Command R to refresh. Yeah, and there it is. So this is my first posting. This should be an H2 tag. Let's open up Firebug. Close this out and inspect it. And as you can see, yippee, it is an H3 tag. So our function did work. And the next step is to make sure, yeah, look, our image. So we come down and let's inspect that. And you can see here, we only added an image tag, but it went ahead and appended the tutorial image. Now you might be wondering, well, how did we get this padding? And I did cheat a little bit. I went ahead and added some styling for that. Very, very basic styling. You can see right here to the bottom of our style sheet. So we set the div with the class of tutorial image. We aligned everything to the center, like so. Uh, we set a background of kind of a bluish gray. Okay, we set a border, you know, this is very something I did in 10 seconds. The image, we don't even need text align in there. Uh, padding, border, and a max width. Max width is equal, I believe, to the width of this main section. And that's so if the user has like a 900 pixel image, it doesn't overflow, that it restricts it. That doesn't work in some of the older browsers, but no big deal. But you can see, so the next step I want to do is go back and this time, let's... Um, Let's go ahead and add the wrapping div. So this time we'll do div class equals tutorial image. Div. And if this works, if we did not do that check, like let's come back, if we didn't do the check right here, if match equals zero, it would just take all images and wrap them within div. So you could end up with two divs with a class of tutorial image and then two closing divs, which is obviously not what you want. That's why we did the match. So let's come back, refresh the page. I'm gonna click on my new posting, and let's see, view page source. Hmm. Now it did, you see that? It did wrap it, which means there's a problem with our regular expression that we need to fix. So let's go in here, and the problem is gonna be somewhere right here. So I'm working through this div class equals tutorial image and then zero more spaces and then image. Yeah, we have to close out our div. So right now it's matching div class equals tutorial image and then spaces and then image. So we got to close out that div. Hopefully that'll fix it. Tutorial image and then our closing quote and then close that out. And then we need to, we're not giving any love to GIF format. So let's add that one in. And how did I forget that? Add that one in too. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is refresh the page. And if it did refresh, it did fix, good. So hopefully everything's working here. Content uh, H3 tags, and now we only have one tutorial image. So what I wanna do real quick, just to make sure it's working is once again, let's get rid of these divs. Update post, come back. And if it did work correctly, this border should still show. And it did. Now here is our subscribe information at the very bottom. This error is because I'm on a local host. So if I did upload this to my server, that would show the dig button. So that has been your getting started with the WordPress plugin. As you can see, it's really just a function. You're just grouping functions that modify the existing WordPress code. And the way we link in is to use add filter. So if you want to learn more about filters, just go to Google and let's do a search for WordPress codex filters. And right here, plugin API, they have an extensive section on the, uh, the WordPress plugin API. Feel free to go through that, look through it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And if you like this, I'd be happy to go into more advanced plugins 
as we um, as we progress. So yeah, go go ahead and read this page. I'm gonna have a link to it for more information. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next week. Bye.